This video is brought to you by Miniature Market. Thousands of board games, discounted prices, miniaturemarket.com. Hello my friends, it's the Game Boy Geek here. Hey, get your paintbrushes ready, get those colors ready, get them all going, get that easel ready, because we're going to be painting some beautiful pictures today in Kanagawa. This is from Yellow Games. It's for two to four players, it takes about 45 minutes to play, and it's designed by a team of designers, two of them. One of them is my favorite designer of all time, Bruno Catala, and the other one is Charles Chevalier. That team is the exact duo that designed a game called Abyss from a couple years ago, a very popular card game. Let's see if it holds up to the name and the lore of these designers. In Kanagawa, you're going to be working on building up your studio so that you can then paint some beautiful pictures of different things like the sun and trees and animals and characters and buildings. And first we go to school. I got to point out, this is awesome. It is literally a real bamboo mat. A great job, Yellow. Now, we're going to deal as many cards depending on if there's two, three, or four players. And you'll notice if, they're, if its background is blank, it'll go face up. If the background is red, they'll go face down. So let's say we're playing with three players. These cards would come out here. And this would come out here like this, one, two, and then this one is face down. However, you can always see if that card is gonna have an animal on it of some type, a character, a tree, or a building. Those are the different types of cards that are in the game. Now, starting with the start player, they can decide to either take any one of these columns and take all the cards that are in it, or they're gonna wait and stay in school longer. And you go and you'd see if you wanna do that. So let's say everyone waited. Well. Now the next set of cards will come out. We have face up, face down, face up. And now let's say someone goes, you know what? The first player is like, I'm really working on the suns here. I really want this. Ooh, and I really need this. So they're gonna take this. They don't know what this is yet, but they will take these and then they will place them uh, in uh, one or two different ways. You can add them either to your studio by flipping them this way, or you can add them to the painting by flipping them the other way. Now, sometimes when you add them to your studio, you'll actually get an ability as opposed to being able to paint. Like this one says, you know what? You're gonna have a new paintbrush for the rest of your time and you can place this on any of them. And let's say I was going to try to paint this one. Now look at this. This one needs two of the yellow paints. I have a wild, but I don't have another one, so I can't really paint this one right, right now. So I'm actually forced to play this one like this. So this would actually go in my studio just like this. But let's say next round, I was really antsy and I just got one card, the first one, because I really want it, because I'm building up this same sun season. Now I need two green trees to be able to paint this. Now, once per round, you can move, because I have this, I can move any paintbrush. I'm already on one of the green, so I could move this one to here using that ability. Well, that's fine too, but let's say this was this. Remember, I had one paintbrush from before. I could actually take this once, and because I haven't used it yet, and put it there. Now I can use this ability to move this paintbrush to something else, because let's say instead of just getting that card there, I had also gotten this one. This one I need a black, so I could have moved the new one here, moved this one here, and now I could have painted two pictures in one, and I could have placed this one over here. So you're, you're adding pictures either for abilities or being able to paint, or to paint things. Now here's where the game gets even more interesting is there's all these bonus tiles that's played during the game. And each of them, you can take them as soon as you get have enough for that reward. For example, if I have three trees that I've painted, I can take this for three points assuming it's still there. But if I place my third tree and I decide not to take this one, I can never take this. I'm foregoing this by pushing my luck, thinking I'll be the first one to get four trees. But maybe somebody else takes this, and I'm trying to be the first one to get five trees. So sometimes you'll forego a bonus, trying to be greedy and get more points, but someone else might beat you to it. But let's say I wanted four trees. I could get this, I could take this, I put it in front of me. Sometimes these offer special abilities I'll talk about later. This one is like, hey, two uh, different characters, three different characters, or three of the same for three, four, and nine points. Two different buildings, three different buildings, or four different buildings for three, four, seven points, and some special abilities I'll talk about later. This one is having two specific animals, sometimes three specific animals. Remember, you can only take one of any type of these during the whole game. These ones are, hey, if I end up having two of the abilities that allow me to move, I'll get to be first player next. Three of them, I'll get some points. If I have a certain amount of paint brushes, or if I have a certain uh, types of things that I can paint, 
two, three, or, or four of all these, uh, I could you know get points like that and some ability. So, but the timing of it is the real crux of this. It's similar to a game called Rise of Augustus, where you're either foregoing the bonus or going for the the whole big thing. And we talked about some of these abilities. Whenever you put some of these in your studio, this would allow you to take this figure, which will allow you to then take the big one and be the, the sort of the, the first player next turn. This one gives you another movement to move a, one of those paint, uh, you know, the painters to somewhere else. You can only use each painter once every round. So moving them somewhere specific is important. Uh, this one allows you to, at the end of a round, you can keep one of these for later. And this, depending on when you place things can be very important. I'll tell you why in end game scoring. And this can get you, you know, another paintbrush so you can paint more things. And this will continue until somebody has 11 uh, cards in their painting, including their start one. Uh, or in case the deck is empty. One of those two things ends the game and then we score. You're going to get one point for each of the things you painted, including your start ties. So it'd be one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. You're also going to get points for the different things. This is one point and this is one point, but some of them give you minus points because they're powerful abilities. So those would have canceled out. We then look at the longest single season. I have a son. Now, the storms are wild, actually, and sometimes through certain abilities, you can get another storm token so you can replace that. So, I, so storms are wild. So I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine actual suns, one contiguous season. That would get me nine more points. We would take points from some of the uh, special bonus points that you got. Also, if you have the Grandmaster Pond, that's another two points. That's pretty much it. Um, after that, whoever has the most points is the winner. Now, I first played this game at Gen Con this past year. I had dinner at Bruno Cathala and he pulled this out. He had like a, an advanced production copy that we played and I immediately fell in love with this game. It is so gorgeous. Looking at these paintings, this might be the best artwork of the year because it's got that watercolors. That's just awesome. The bamboo mat, yellow, again, always doing great production. It's so cool to like unroll that mat and the first thing people are gonna ask and go, is that a real bamboo mat? And you're gonna go, yeah, and I'm gonna go, that is so cool. Guarantee you it's gonna happen the first time you pull this out in front of anybody. So the components are awesome. The idea behind the card drafting is awesome. It's like, okay, do I want to be greedy and wait? But if I wait, somebody else might take the ones that I want. Do I wanna take the one I want? I don't know, do, they, do I really think they're gonna go for that, that, that column? They're not really, you, you look at what they're going for and you can try to decide a lot to think about. There's some interesting aspects of that card drafting with that sort of press your luck mechanism there. And then there's so many different avenues to go. Do you go for the trees? Do you go for the characters? Do you go for the buildings? Do you go for the seasons? Do you go for which bonuses do you go for? The bonuses are amazing. If you've played uh, Rise of Augustus before, this essentially is the same bonus structure of that, where you get to a certain point and you're like, okay, do I want to go for that bonus? Uh, the higher one, do I want to just take this one? Do I think someone else is on my heels that is, is getting ready to do a big play here? Or should I say, you know what? I'm the first one to two, three trees. Screw it. I'm going to wait. I'm going to wait. I'm going to, I think I'll be the first one to get to four. And if you are great, but if you're not, you get nothing. And that's awesome. I love the way they use this bonus structure because I loved it in Augustus. I love it just as much here. It works awesome. Overall, just the game is so amazing. It's like, and then once you take the cards, it's like, am I going to paint it? Can I paint it? Or am I going to flip it over and now add to my studio? Sometimes it gives you those special abilities like holding a card because you want to play it at the right time to maybe line up your seasons. It's such a simple little card game. But again, Bruno is the master at having these simple concepts, but having them really grab you and having all these, uh, you know, decisions to make. And this is just another gem. This is an amazing game. It's phenomenal. I really, really like this game. So because of that, I'm going to be keeping this in my gaming library. So let's induct it properly with a saxophone serenade. This video was sponsored by Miniature Markets Review Corner. The Review Corner features podcasts, video, and written game reviews by gamers for gamers. Miniature Market, the online gaming superstore. Thousands of board games, discounted prices. Check them out at miniaturemarket.com. I'd like to thank each and every one of you for backing me on Kickstarter and making this season become a reality. I'd like to especially thank those here that have backed me at the credit level. Now, these video reviews are also available by audio on our podcast. It's the intros and the final thoughts on GameboyGeek.com. Click podcast.